What is up guys? My name is Cherno. Welcome back to another Cherno live stream, aka the game engine series. Haven't done an actual Cherno live stream in a while. That need to need to need to stream more. Need to stream more. That's the consensus. Um all right. So today we're going to dive into some more C# -sharp scripting work. Um we're going to like it's been 2 weeks, so me being the forgetful person I am sometimes, completely forgot to cancel last week's stream. It was my my wife's birth, birthday, so we went away like for a couple of days, and I was just like, oh, you know, <laughs> stream stream doesn't doesn't mind, you know, whatever. No one's gonna show up, and then people were like, oh, is there a stream? What's happening to the stream? So yeah, I apologize, but um, I'm gonna try and not do that again. Uh, but it was a good time for all zero of you who asked, and um. Hey, Vague Lobster, thanks for the sub. 25 months. You hear that, Tim? Yeah, that's 25 cool. months. That's, that's, like that's longer than you've worked here. <laughs> there you go. Vague Lobster. Vague Lobster's the OG. I thought Tim was the OG, but... <laughs> <laughs> You're the OG employee. <laughs> Close call on missing the birthday. Yeah, it was it was a close call. I had to flip a coin in the end to decide what I would do. Um, but I think I made the right call. <laughs> Oof. It's hard sometimes, you know. Um, so we're going to uh, continue on with um, probably playing a little bit around with Box 2D and kind of creating our API for scripting and really our whole workflow for scripting along the way because I like to start working on stuff like you know I think I still think the best probably one one of the best ways to write code is just to start like you know trying to do things as if the code's already there and then filling in the blanks instead of trying to sit down design a system uh, which is actually kind of um, echo thanks for the sub by the way and good morning to you too um, it's kind of back like if you think about it we're building a game engine here so we're actually kind of doing the opposite like usually a game engine like is a set of tools that you use or a platform you use to build something right so what you can also do is fall into the trap of just building the tools right without actually having a project to build with the tools and if you do that then you have no idea what you're doing because you can just arbitrarily work on creating tools for the rest of your life and if you're not also using them to develop something, you can get very lost with what you even need in the first place. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's just extremely common to kind of run into that problem. However, the other thing that's um, kind of, that, that is good about that, or like an, another place that you could apply that same kind of philosophy to, is just like within the, the game engine that we're developing also, you know, what features do we add? because we could just go through and arbitrarily add features. And of course, there's a lot we could think about in terms of what we actually will definitely 100% need for the future. But it's also kind of fun to create things with the tools that you already have and then kind of add things along the way. I think that's like really quite fun um, to do. And, and so because of that, um, I kind of like the idea of, you know, continuing to use Box2D, making maybe even a little game out of it, and then having, like, instead of having this series of small scenes that do, like, one or two things and then just playing around with that stuff, it would be really cool, I think, to kind of work on one big scene, or not, not, not like a huge scene, right, because then we can kind of also get too carried away with that, but we can kind of work on something a little bit larger, like an actual project that we can keep adding stuff to, and then implement engine stuff along the way. And I think especially with the C-sharp scripting API, that's gonna be a lot more fun to do, first of all, instead of just sitting down and writing like a wrapper for absolutely every function we have in the end, which is very, very boring and tedious. And also for me as, you know, trying to make, um, <laughs> trying to make, uh, you know, a video, an entertaining video series out of it as well. It's going to make it even harder for that. Um, so instead of doing all that, it's probably nice to work on something. So that, that's kind of my, my thoughts um, with what we should continue on with. That being said, we could also like take a break from C-sharp scripting and do some of the other stuff. I might even... 
I might even do that at some point just because like we have a bunch of features that we need to implement for Hazel Dev. Uh, well, for ha for the real version of Hazel, for the big version of Hazel. And so what we could do is implement them here and then carry them across to that. Um, and then there's also like, obviously eventually we want to do like the Vulcan stuff as well. Like there's a lot of things we could do. And so I don't really mind taking a break from C-sharp um, eventually. Like we'll probably continue on with C-sharp stuff today, but in general, like, you know, it's kind of, it depends. The, the, working on a game engine, there's so many different things you could do. And I think that sometimes like switching up what you work on can be really kind of helpful for, you know, to keep you motivated and also um, to keep the series kind of entertaining. What's playing in the background? Uh, music wise, what have we got? I just got some like alternative hip hop. What's this going on right now? Epidemic sound, alternative hip hop. Um, I don't know. Well, like, by the time, like back back when you asked, it was probably a different song. I think was it this one? It's just Strummer Boy. Strummer Boy by Dusty Dex. That's what's playing in the background. Um, what about debugging C# -sharp scripts? Yeah, well, we we should probably have debugging support as well. That's a little bit, um, from what I know, it's a it's a little bit tedious to set up, so we'll probably delay that a bit. Um, what's this camera thing? Like, why is it got this? Why does it have this orange thing around it? Let me show my screen, and we'll get into it. All right, I've got this like, this thing. What's this thing around the camera? <laughs> Why is it even there? That's very weird. That's supposed to be like the selection thing, but the camera doesn't have a, the camera's only got a transformer camera and a script. So why would it be showing that? Um, I think what we can do is probably, um, I think like, yeah, there's, there's a, there's definitely a few things that we should do for scripting. Um, hmm. I should probably figure out what's causing this as well, but for scripting, like, I think, I think we should probably like continue on with some of the script engine features that we don't have yet, but would be useful, such as like having fields for our C-sharp um, classes. What was, there was a few other things we wanted to do. Hmm. This is what we've currently got. And it might take me a little bit of time to remember exactly like what, like what features we actually have written already. Yeah, not much. I mean, we can obviously update entities and call, yeah, various entity functions. Um, we, we've added the component stuff last time, which was kind of important, right? So I think we have a, another class here called script glue, another file here called script glue, which has a few of this, of the, the things that we, um, added for like registering functions and also components. So we added this register components thing and we were able to go through and register every single component, which is important so that we could then, um, so that we could then like inside our actual C-sharp code, oh, multiple assemblies. That's what I really needed to set up, didn't I? Maybe we should do that today. Um, yeah, I think that would be interesting to do today. Because at the moment, like, the big problem, one of the biggest problems we have is that Hazel's script core contains, like, everything, and not just the script core, meaning, like, the scripting API, but also, like, the kind of game that we've currently made. So if we play this scene with the WASD keys, uh, we can control this white square, right? So I'm moving that with the WASD keys. And we've written that behavior in C sharp. The problem is that um, this kind of game that we've written uh, actually uses like 
th like it's inside this Hazel script called binary, which it should not be. It shouldn't be in this project. We should have like another project that references the script core, but is its own standalone kind of DLL that the engine will load because that's the game that we're kind of loading. So let's set that up today because I don't think that'll be too difficult. Um, I think what we should do, so in general, the way that we actually set this up inside um, Big Hazel is basically we have something called, we actually have a project, right? We've got a, we have a, well, we have a project system, of course, but in general, we ship a project with like the repository, the base kind of Hazel repository. And that's called like Hazel's, um, that's called Sandbox Project. And Sandbox Project contains like a bunch of examples, basically. And it's like our example project that contains a bunch of scenes and, uh, you know, just some examples of how to get started with Hazel and play around with this so that we're not opening like an empty, an empty editor and also we use it for like QA and stuff like that um, so we could set something like that up uh, and we would probably set that up within hazelnut just like it is inside um, big hazel so at the moment like we've only got we've got some resources in here but ultimately we would set up like this kind of sandbox project like in here and then this would for example be the place where our binary would actually exist. Now this is, requires like a whole project system which we need to create at some point and this is supported, that like obviously Hazel itself kind of, um, you know, supports all of this already. But uh, yeah, maybe let's do something like that. So I think what we'll, what we'll do is we'll set up sandbox project and then I'm gonna say assets, scripts, right? And inside scripts, I'm gonna actually set up like a Lua file, like a pre-make file. Um, and we had one of these, didn't we, for... Uh, so the way this is set up at the moment is we have our little gen projects, which I'll copy as well. And then we have Hazel Script Core, I think, yeah, it has its own pre-make. So we'll grab this pre-make instead. Um, but what I want to do is I also want to grab the, our base kind of pre-make, um, because that defines our workstation, uh, our, like, workspace and all of our, um, like, startup, like, our solution level things, and we're going to need that because this pre-make is not just going to be one project, it's actually going to be, it's going to be its own solution, it's going to be our kind of sandbox project. And this is something that eventually we should we should probably generate like one of these files when we when we go file new project or something like that in the future um, inside Hazel and that's how Big Hazel works at the moment as well. Um, so the start project is going to be um, we'll call this like yeah we'll call this maybe sandbox and then the start project will be sandbox as well. Um, we're gonna reference an existing uh, library which is going to be our script core. Um, so, yeah, so we'll include that one. I mean, we'll still need this one, though. Uh, and then this is going to be sandbox instead. It's going to be shared library. Um, files are going to be all the same and everything. The only difference, really, is going to be it's going to link. So we'll do links. Um, Hazel script core. And what I want to do is I actually want to kind of take a look at how we do this in, in uh, Big Hazel. Just so that I know what the convention, like what convention we basically decided on. So if we take a quick look, uh, sure. This one. I'm just gonna open a like a solution file. Yeah, we just kind of put it into Hazel. So so what we did was we made a group. Um, so after we did this, it doesn't really matter where you do this. Let's just do it after. Um, we made a group called Hazel. I always clear that at the end, just in case we add more things. Um, and then we can just include, like, basically, well, in this case, I guess we'd go back, like, one, two, three, four directories and into um, Hazel Script Core. So, one, two, three, four, and then Hazel Script Core, and then that's kind of what we can include like that, right? Um, now, the thing with this is that, like, obviously this path, um, if you make a new project completely, and we'll talk about projects later, like, this wasn't really my intention today. Cody 
Cody P. Christian, thank you for the sub. Appreciate the support. Um, like, uh, ultimately, like, I think that when we get into projects, this will probably make more sense, and we'll talk about this more, and I don't know exactly when we'll do that. Probably not for a little, little bit of time. Although, I don't know, because if we... I kind of wanted to start working on, like, a bit of a game inside Hazel 2D. Um, however, I feel like if I do that before we introduce the project system, that's just going to be painful. So we might actually have to do that sooner rather than later. I think maybe what we'll do is we'll wrap... Like, after c -sharp scripting, the next thing we'll do is we'll, we'll handle projects. Because... Um, and we'll probably do that with before Vulkan. Because Vulkan, again, like, I would love to um, actually kind of implement Vulkan or switch to Vulkan at a time where we already have like a bit of a game that we've made because like at the end of the day at the end of the day it really doesn't matter what api we use i would like to switch to vulcan just because it will um help us like optimize the engine a lot but we also don't really need to optimize it at the moment um so yeah so we'll see but basically um we'll include the script court yeah so when you do generate the project my point with this was that you probably want to like check out what like what version of hazel you're generating the project with and where that root directory is and then basically put the root directory into here and then go slash like hazel script core to get that but this is going to be sandbox everything else is going to be the same now obviously target directory uh which we kind of already have an output directory here that we're not really using uh which is weird but um basically i think what we can just do can we just do binaries slash... Can we just do binaries? Uh, and then intermediates. Like, let's see what this ends up doing. Um, and then what? Links, Hazel, Script Core, all of this stuff. Yeah, so let's try this. Uh, I don't know if we need edit a config. Probably not. And multiprocess compile, sure. Yeah, let's try that. Okay, so now we have a pre-make file to generate all the script stuff. It's called... Uh, it's not really called anything, but... Oh, we also have to go back, don't we? Yeah, so see... Okay, that's that's fine, though. One, two, three, four. Wait, no, if we go back to this... Why are we even do this in the first place? No, we don't have to do this, I think. I think we just do that. I think that's the strat. <coughs> Okay, so that didn't work. <laughs> what? What happened here? Why did that not work? And that was a weird error as well. <laughs> VS2005. That's weird. Well, can't say I've had this before. Um, I mean, I don't think running premake by itself is going to make any difference. It clearly can run premake. It just doesn't seem to be working here. Oh, wait, hang on. What are we running premake with? We're just running it in this directory, which I think should just, with VS. 2022, which should just load, yeah, which should just load it, which should just load this file and then generate everything based on that file, I believe, which is a bit weird that that's not, not happening. And put our workspace, we got all this stuff. All right, we did try and include this. Let's see if that include works. Actually, if I just get rid of... Oh, I've also got it open here. If I just get rid of this for a second... Let's see if that does anything. Yeah, what's going on here? That's super weird. Maybe it's not even... Do I have pre makes somewhere in my path? No, I don't. Let's just quickly copy it.
What's going on with this, man? Stream, help me. <laughs> I mean, obviously this stuff works, right? Yeah, that works fine. Oh, hang on. Vanda Premac. Is this, like, weirdly hooked up with... I think this might be hooked up with... Well, but, well, but it shouldn't be. Because there, I think there's some, like... Yeah, there's this whole, like, pre premade customization solution items thing. That might be the reason. Because this might be a specialized version of premade in Hazel 2D. Which I don't even... Uh, I'm not even aware of that. Because um, I didn't add that. Someone else did. And we don't use that in um, in, in real Hazel. Um, but let's go to Hazelnut Sandbox Project Assets Scripts. And I want to, in this pre mag which I already had open, let's add, I guess, this. So, let's do a little, like, hazel root directory equals that, just so that we can easily combine this stuff. Um, and then, can we just, like, do that kind of like here I might just do that does that look better maybe okay so if we do that and then also yeah okay let's try this out yeah, I think it's because there's some weird... Okay, that clearly did not work. It works for these things. <laughs> um, I just wonder if there's an elegant way to do that. Not that I use little much. Oh, yeah, with F, I think. Does that work? No. As a special library or whatever. How did I used to do this stuff? sucks um yeah I want to yeah I'll add this as well um but no I think it's I don't think that's the problem yeah it's just it, this thing is just not working so we'll just do I guess that that supposedly should work although I don't know if that works with includes yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> this is so annoying. Lua. Lua is just the best. How do I add this into this string? Like, is that is this really this difficult to do? Because the dot dot seems to just break everything. Do I need to make another variable out of it? I should probably make this local as well. But see, that like needs, I don't know, does it even work with variables like that? It doesn't look like it does. What, it needs like a string. But
parentheses. Like, you mean like this? Ah. Ah. No, but now it's oh, line 58. Oh, cool. So I guess that did work. Okay, so you can do this apparently. I guess that works. Oh, <laughs> we did it. Jeez, that took a while. <laughs> um, alright. Would you say pre-make is easier than C-make? Oh, yeah, definitely. I like pre-make a lot more. Um, I don't really, like, everyone in the industry uses C-make. Like, yeah, C-make's definitely more popular and, and definitely easier to get along with. But I, like, I don't know. Like, it's weird. I think that, I think that, um, I don't know that I would generally say that it's only good for personal projects. I, I would say that, like, like, for example, Hazel is a, is a rather big project, like, and we have a lot of dependencies, and we use Premake, like, mainly for everything, and it's not really that much of a problem. Like, the, the fact of the matter is that, like, you know, if, if, I mean, I worked at EA, so that's usually the example I give, but, like, um, but, like, you know, if we if we look at a project like Frostbite, which obviously is huge, like we they they don't use CMake, they they have their own build system. So in other words, if you grab a dependency from the internet, <laughs> you know, that uses CMake, like that doesn't matter even because you're gonna have to rewrite the build scripts anyway. And it's the same situation like for us, I guess, on Hazel. If we use a dependency, we need to write our own kind of build script in PreMake that um, will generate like our project files. But that's kind of nice because it means we can, we ultimately get more control over what we take and what we don't take. Um, but also it's just really not that big of a deal to do. So I don't know, like, yes, I guess CMake is nice in the sense that if you just wanna like absolutely like no effort, just add a dependency, then yes. But I don't, you know, I don't just add dependencies lightly So I don't mind like making sure that they build correctly and to Hazel's configuration, if that makes sense. Thanks, Doug Tensor, for the sub. Lua is not capitalized though, it's not an acronym. <sighs> so that's your tip of the day. <laughs> uh no, we're not gonna compile to WebAssembly with Mscriptum. And no, it really wouldn't require anything. Like you can just get it to translate everything for you. Sparky used to use Mscriptum, and we use DirectX for Sparky. Well, and OpenGL, I guess. But, like, yeah, it's... It will just auto-translate to WebGL, or whatever. Hemscripton's pretty amazing. Um, okay, so we finally have this working. I guess I should probably just... do that. Um, and I probably should also put this, like... Uh, I think you can do location. Well, I don't know if I want a location. How did this even used to work? I guess that's that's fine for now. I'll get rid of this, obviously. So that should work. And now I should have a sandbox solution. So I've made a new solution project, right? And you can see it's automatically set everything up here. Oh, it's got hazelnut here. Resources script, sorry, that's not good. Why has it done that? Oh, maybe because that's what this uses? But that's... That's kind of a shame. Because it's going to build this there, but I want that to not... That's bad. Because, yeah, that's going to try build into here now, but... Oh, uh, I think the way we solve that is... Yeah. Is that in the original script core, we have to go back and make sure that basically this script core... Um, instead of going off workspace location, it needs to go off this kind of like Hazel Hazel root directory. We'll say that, right? And I'll set that up in a minute. Um, so in this case, it will go to hey, yeah, it'll go to Hazelnut like that, 
from the root directory. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and so the way that's gonna work is we set a hazel root directory. Um, or actually, is that gonna be per kind of thing, per project? Because it's gonna it's gonna depend where you call it from. But my idea was just to um, like set it up in this premake. So like before we include say hazel script core and all this stuff, we can set this to be, I don't know if we can make it local like that or if it needs to be global or whatever, but um, we can set it to be like dot dot slash because relative to all of these projects, it's going to be one directory back. But then inside um, our other premake, obviously it's going to be this, right? So let's see what that does. A nil value. It did say global though. I don't know if it needs to be. I don't know. I don't know anything about Lua. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> okay, that seemed to work, so whatever. So if we go to Sandbox. So see, now this hopefully should build into back there, right? Um, which means that if I just delete, like, Hazelnut and build this, it should not come back. Yep. So I think it builds into the right place. And we can check to see when it built. So if I go back to hazelnut resources scripts, because we want the core one to be, yeah, no, that's wrong. <laughs> that's not the right one. I probably missed a directory or something. I always do this. Where did it go? Oh, it says here. C dev hazelnut, nice. Okay. How did that go back like three directories? What on earth? Oh, because it's it's back it's back from the project directory. Oh, the problem was it used workspace. So it's it's it is relative to the project. Of course it is. I'm a bit of an idiot sometimes. <laughs> so I think what we should have done actually is uh we don't need Hazel Root directory in that premake. I think what we should have done is just always like gone back a directory like that. Cause relative to our current project, it's always gonna be there. So I think that's correct. At least for now. Um, which means that we can also go to like here and get rid of this and keep this local. And there you go. All right, cool. We're good? Okay, so let's see our paths. Um, yes, that's correct. So that is in fact where we built to. We're good with that. And then that is also now where we load um, this stuff. So, there it is. It also builds it here for some reason. I don't know why it just tends to do that because it's like a dependency or whatever. But also, yeah, this does refer to Hazel script core, which is important. So now ultimately the way that we set this up is we're going to make a source folder. Um, and then inside this source folder, we're going to grab like camera and player. Whoops. Camera and player. I'm going to grab that because that obviously shouldn't be part of the core library. That should be part of our like sandbox project. Um, and then into source, we plop them in, right? And then we can add existing. I mean, we could also just use premake, I think, to regenerate it, which might be better. All right, there we go. Source camera player. And this should all hopefully work and compile because it's referring to this and you can see it does. So that's kind of the setup for this, right? Um, so, 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 next up, um, we just need to make sure that we load this using our script engine. 
So at the moment, we kind of have this function to load assembly, obviously. And at the moment, you can see that we specifically load the Hazel script core. We also kind of need to load this other one. And we're going to call this load app assembly. Um, and the reason why is it's going to kind of be, it's going to be a bit different. Now, I actually don't think if, I don't think, mm, we, we might refactor this a little bit because there doesn't really have to be, like the code doesn't have to be completely duplicated because it's the same code. It's just going to be setting it into different, like variables. So we have app domain. Um, we probably need a separate domain for the assembly, I imagine. So, or maybe not actually. No, no, no. We, I don't think we do. Sorry. We do need a different assembly. So core assembly, core assembly image. We'll duplicate that and we get app assembly because we can only have one core assembly loaded and one app assembly loaded. That's pretty standard. Don't need to have more. Um, well, no, actually, like, so the reason being is that in case our assembly has any dependencies, like, to be honest, I don't even think we need to load the core assembly. We do because it makes sense, like, for us, we might want to use it for certain things. Like, for example, even if there's no app assembly loaded. But otherwise, if you, any dependencies that you have, because we, for example, do in fact have dependencies on certain, on certain, um, you know, uh, C Sharp library, at like uh, libraries and like library libraries <laughs> on certain C sharp like libraries and their DLLs and stuff it will automatically load them in as like on demand basically when it's needed um, which may or may not be a good thing but it definitely will work so because of that we don't really need to um, worry about that I think Might as well keep that there um, but ultimately, yeah, we now have obviously this app assembly, create app domain, that doesn't need to happen. In fact, we probably should move that out. But if we load assembly first, this should be okay. So that's kind of our core assembly. That's our app assembly, uh, which is going to be different. So for now, what that's going to be is it's going to be sandbox project slash like uh, assets slash script slash binary slash sandbox. I think, I think that's probably the correct path relative to what relative to hazelnut so sandbox project assets scripts binaries and sandbox of dll right so those are kind of our two dlls so because of that um we're now probably ready to actually do stuff with them so what we kind of did is again entity class exists we looked through entity classes and entity classes the way we even I think created these, right, is we went through and we loaded assembly classes for a given assembly. And this given assembly was in fact the core assembly, which is of course is just not what we want to do at all, because we, are, we want to specifically load the uh, all of the entities from the app, because the, this is, the core is not even going to have any entities, that was just during our test, right? So let's try and probably run this, we'll see if this even works. Um, and also once we load that, cause that should be the app assembly. I just want to make sure that, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like the, the thing is we're probably using, <laughs> we're probably using the core assembly in a lot of places. Like for example, script glue, like how is that loading? How is that doing stuff? I mean, this is just like script glue, I guess, but an add internal call, I guess is for, is that, that's kind of a global thing for the actual mono instance. So get core assembly image, like where's that used for example? Oh, it is used in script glue. But that's fine because actually for components, all components are declared in core, right? We could maybe let people add their own components and then maybe in that case we would change that, but I don't think that's necessary for now. So see instantiate class, for example, right? I want to make sure that, yeah, so monoclass from name, script class, this again cannot use the core assembly. This has to use app assembly. So we need to make sure that is the case. Otherwise we won't find them. It's okay. We can just run this. This isn't, this isn't dangerous to run or anything. We can just run it and see what we, what, what, what we get. Right. So let's just hit F5. Um, <laughs> how long did you work at EA Frostbite? Like, um, four and a half years. Um, what th this theme? Uh, you're talking about the Carla theme. This is kind of like my own, based on this theme called Grovebox, which you can Google and find some info on. Okay, so we got a little crash, which is fun. That's cool. Um, <laughs> load assembly classes from init and from app assembly. So did app assembly even get loaded? 
That's my question. Of course, this doesn't work. Let's rerun this and see what happens. Yeah, I might um, release my theme. I'll just like make it available for download. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with it. People have been asking me about it for like a, the last month or so, but well, I always kept saying that I'll see if I actually like it. Like I might want to tweak it more. And now that I have, I think I'm happy with it. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's... Well, the problem with Visual Studio and it's stupid debugging sometimes is that it thinks as data is something else in a different class completely. <laughs> and so I can't actually see if it's loading this stuff. Um, which kind of sucks. So... Let's do this. Just to see what's up. Because I have a feeling... Well, I mean, I don't know. If it doesn't load it, we should know, though. Yeah, it definitely loaded it. So it's loading it fine. But then load assembly classes. Let's see what that does. So image, guess image, not the types, three types, empty class. Is null hazel and... Ah, okay. So it's trying to load... I see. Okay. So, see, this is the this is the difference here. So, um, load assembly classes. First of all... Let's just have it not use, um, not take in a given assembly because it's going to need two anyway. Um, so assembly get image. So this is, the problem is we, this, ugh, why do we even have image here? Because we were taking it in that way. No, this is dumb. Let's get rid of this. So this is going to be the type definitions table. We're going to probably get from the app assembly image. Uh, but the entity class we need to get from the core assembly image because it's not going to be in the app assembly. Uh, and then when we get like the namespace, obviously, of the types that we've gotten from the app assembly image, we also need to make sure that we're looking at the app assembly image when it comes to like this, this kind of stuff. So let's do all of that and let's hit a five. That should probably work. All right, so we got a little, little abort. Uh-huh, so this is probably us trying to get something from the wrong thing. Hmm, S data entity class constructor. And I can't get that. Ah. Oh. So, yeah, that's could be a problem. Yeah, okay, huh. that's a bit of a problem. Um, I think we need to make sure that we actually. Uh, I mean, this is a bit of a lame fix, but um, if it's core, we can use the core assembly image. Uh, and, that, and that should be basically it. And then the idea is when we make... Because this is just the, the, the one, and like, entity class is just one little thing we need here. And it's core, so it's true. But yeah, I don't really like that. <laughs> okay, good. So that's it. Um, that worked surprisingly quickly. So 
for those of you who blinked and missed it, um, basically, uh, we now basically, like, what, what we did was we moved out all of the actual kind of game logic that we added to our scene. It's no longer in Hazel Script Core, which obviously is kind of inside our main, like, Hazel solution. It's now in its own separate sandbox solution. So this is like our game now. It's separate from the engine. Um, and it references the existing Hazel script core. This is the exact same instance of Hazel script core as we have here, right? Same exact one. Um, so anything we change here, if we do, it will obviously affect that as well. It's not a copy or anything. Um, and when we build the sandbox, like it's now, this is now the thing that we load as part of Hazel, right? So there you go. That's basically it. Um, could probably end the stream here.